Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Comic Book Nostalgia. I'm CB Nostalgia, and I got a little update on Spider-Man No Way Home. Well, this past weekend saw Spider-Man No Way Home release the more fun stuff version. And the initial reports were the feature was doing awesome at the box office. But that might have been a bit premature. Now, over the weekend, all signs pointed to Spider-Man No Way Home jumping back on top of the North American box office. Presented to fans as the more fun stuff version, it actually included 11 new minutes of footage that were integrated into the film. But some of the problems that it faced may have come back and bit it in the behind. I wasn't the only one that noticed that there was a huge lack of marketing, very little buzz, and when we went and saw the movie, quite honestly, the scenes were not that eventful, leading to the film underperforming over the weekend. Early in the weekend, it appeared the movie was going to top the box office for the extended Labor Day weekend but by the time the smoke cleared, it barely made third place. The movie actually came in behind Top Gun Maverick and Bullet Train, pulling in $6.55 million. That's right, only $6.55 million. What's even more depressing is it barely beat Super Pets, which came in at $6.365, so only about $200,000 in box office sales separated the two. Now, quite honestly, we talked about this a little bit. This totally feels like a cash grab, and it really does feel at this point that Sony may have dropped the ball. Not only did they not give fans some of the scenes that they were sort of promised, but they didn't promote the feature in order to get the hype train built around it returning to theaters, and I really think this impacted the number of people who showed up. Many people are referring to this as the Betty Cut, because most of the new footage, or at least the majority of the time spent with the new footage, was Betty Brandt doing various things, like interviewing her classmates or that post credit scene. With only 11 minutes of new footage, there wasn't that much there, and I think many fans feel quite cheated over what Sony Pictures has brought us in this extended version. These shots were supposed to be on the Blu-ray, and many fans actually purchased the Blu-ray when the shots were supposed to be there. Now, to ask them to go back to theaters, pay for another ticket, and watch the movie again seems to be a pretty high price for people to go for, and I think they outwardly rejected this soundly. Now, I don't think this really hurts the Spider-Man franchise. I'm sure Sony is a bit disappointed in the results, but the movie itself still brought in almost $2 billion. It may still limp across that $2 billion line. We'll have to wait and see, but I think the real question is, will future editions of the Blu-ray include all these deleted scenes that we were robbed of the first time around? I'm still kind of upset about that. Now, obviously, we're going to be covering Sony's Spider-Verse in all its aspects moving forward, so make sure you hit that like and subscribe button to make sure you get all the Spider-Verse updates. But until we know more, what do you guys think? Are you surprised Spider-Man No Way Home only did $6.5 million on its re-release weekend? And do you think this was because of the quality of the scenes? Or do you think it was due to the lack of promotion by Sony Pictures? Tell me what you think in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure you hit like, click subscribe, and if you don't ring that bell, you won't get any updates. Peace.